The motto for world-class competition has always been faster, higher, stronger. It's the same for Navian, makers of condensing tankless water heaters. Faster to install and set up. Higher performance and efficiency to provide endless hot water. Stronger with the industry's strongest warranty. All because of the copper-free stainless steel heat exchanger built in every unit. Learn about Navian's condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at tanklessmadesimple.com. That's tanklessmadesimple.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. You know we got hockey coming here, NHL style. Yeah, baby. Steve is very, very excited. More so probably than almost anybody on the staff when you think about it. Oh, dude, so excited. Tyron also, I think, is probably on that level. Uh, but I think everybody's really kind of been bit by the hockey bug. I'm talking to guys like, you know, Thrilled, obviously Ted, big Capitals fan. Yeah. Miles, Castle. Everybody seems really stoked about the idea of having a brand new franchise that we could see grow from, yeah. from its inception, BJ. It's a lot of fun. It really, really is. And, of course, getting a third team back. Here, you know, well, I should say a fourth professional team because we got the Sounders too. Uh, it, it's it's exciting. With the Sea Wolves, BJ. Uh, I forgot about the Sea Wolves. You're right. Okay, a fifth, a fifth, uh, sixth with the rain. I forgot the rain. Well, they're going to Tacoma, aren't they? Seventh with the storm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're right. We got a lot. Oh, Jesus. Well, anyway, we. I'm just trying to do is get you to buy a hockey jersey. Buy a damn hockey jersey. They look awesome. KISW Rock hockey jerseys, completely amazing with the black and uh, you know the red and yellow piping. Oh, get it customized with your own name, your own number. Celebrate hockey rock style. Go to KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix. Don't be a loser. B-Mix. You're a loser. It is time to be Turned out for Thursday. Out for what? Yeah, boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Turn it uh-huh. out for that Thursday. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you might want to clear your throat first, though. No. <laughs> let's go. Steve's in his Batman voice. Where's the trigger? <laughs> let's go. Yeah, but you can't oh. hurt me. <laughs> let's get to our contestant. We got Robinson and Olympia to take on Steve. Robinson, are you there, sir? I am. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Blue Oyster Cult. No. <laughs> you should not fear the Reaper. <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult tickets. Accept him. Accept Godzilla. Yes. There goes Tokyo. Go, go, Godzilla. <laughs> That's uh, all we got for you. Is that the only ones we know? That's about it. That's all I got. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. uh, and real quick, Casino, Blue Oyster Cult. They're going to be there March 30th. Go to KISW.com for all the details. If you want to take it to Ticketmaster.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Robinson will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Robinson, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I am. Get your victory song ready there, BJ. No, I love this, Robinson. Love it. Which city served as the capital of the United States from 1785 to 1790? Pass. A twitcher is a person who watches what type of animal? A what person? A twitcher. Pass. <laughs> Which TV show featured a prehistoric father figure named Earl Sinclair? Oh, dinosaur. Yes. Wow. Old Scratch is a nickname for what biblical character? Ooh. What in the world? Pass. What was the first flavor of the malt beverage named Zima? <laughs> Lime? Lemon? Yep. Vanilla? No, no, no. Carlos Erwin Estevez is better known by what stage name? Uh, Emilio Estevez. No. Uh, Charlie Sheen. Yes! Yes! GoldenEye was a classic game for which Nintendo system? 
54. Yes. What seaport's name is Spanish for White House? <laughs> what mode of transportation did Gary Newman sing about in his 1980 hit? Yeah. A boat? No. Uh, train? No. Robinson, Gary, my boat. Name? I have That's no idea. Safest of all. I, I can maybe cast. I can paddle my way in boats. <laughs> oh, God. Here in my boat, I have a life preserver. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Robinson, song. valiant yeah. effort. Um, I mean, three oh, correct is good lord. Yeah, Robinson yeah, and I will it. not be getting a song. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get a song. No, that was that, that was a real uh, that was a Matt Hasselbeck exactly. moment. Right? I was about to say that. Yeah, it sure was. We're going to get the ball and we're going to score. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, yeah, this is going to be going for you, Steve. Yeah. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. If you lose this one, Steve, then well. you really should, like, just say you suck for the rest of your life. Okay. Oh. Well, that's yeah. no pressure. Okay. None at all. Uh, which city served as the capital of the United States from 1785 to 1790? New York. Yes. A twitcher is a person who watches, who watches what type of animal? A twitcher? I don't know. Um, uh, a kangaroo. No. Crocodiles. No. Birds. Yes. Which wow, TV show really? featured a prehistoric father figure named Earl Sinclair? Uh, the dinosaurs. Yes. Old Scratch. Great show. Old Scratch is a nickname for which biblical character? Oh, crap. Uh, Moses? No. Um, Joseph? No. Uh, Judah? No. The whale? No. What Jesus. was this? No. What was the first flavor of the malt beverage named Zima? Oh, my God. I forgot about those drinks. <laughs> Lemon lime? Yes. Carlos Erwin Estevez is better known by what stage name? Is that Charlie Sheen? Yes. Goldeneye yeah. was a classic game for which Nintendo system? Ooh, N64. Yes. <laughs> what seaport's name is Spanish for White House? Casablanca? Yes. That's it. What mode of transportation did Gary Newman sing about in his 1980 hit? Cars. Damn it. Yes. I'm sure it's not boats. <laughs> Steve, you win eight to three. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Robinson. <sighs> yeah, I guess I was bound to lose eventually. So uh, congrats there, Steve. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Right, there you go. That's right. Ending January with a victory. Yeah, you are. Good job. Uh, Robinson predicted a win and yeah. nowhere near. Oh, did he? Yeah. 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 And then he answered. Yeah, he answered the Gary Newman song about boats. Yeah. Is it the devil? It is the devil. Damn it. What's and, the devil? Uh, it's Old Scratch. Scratch. Oh, I had a brain fart. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't. I don't think I knew that. I feel bad for Robinson too because for the Zima question, he answered lemon and then lime, but not lemon lime. lime. Yeah, and that's a huge thing, right? No, there. it's true. If if he had said both as a one one flavor, mm-hmm. I, even I have to uh, go with you on that one. Oh, okay. I love it. Somebody just texted, "Not the mama." <laughs> from the Dude, dinosaur show. That's that show amazing. Was so good. It had one season, right? No, it had uh, a lot three, of seasons. Yeah, really? I thought, I thought it, it had two or three. It had a couple of seasons, and it ended so bleak. It was one of the darkest endings of a show, wow, especially as one right. with Muppets, because the world ended with a gigantic ice age due to climate change, which kind of makes a little bit of sense right now in 2019, when we're dealing with the damn same thing. Yeah, there that, that, four that, seasons. Four yeah. seasons. It had four seasons? Yeah. yeah. Wow, I can't believe it was on. Now I, I, now I can appreciate why people remember that show so much. I don't know why I only thought it had one season. Oh, that was a fun. It was almost as good as Alf, but that was a really cool show. Yeah, Dinosaurs <laughs> was a good show. I used to watch it in Spanish. And by the way, Rev, uh, they're still fighting <laughs> over this. Huh. They're fighting over this. I know we're having a massive freeze freeze wave right now uh, and a cold snap, but they're, wave. they're not sure it's actually climate change. The scientists are going back and forth going, we're not sure why this is, but they're not blaming it. On, they're not 100% sure it's climate change as far as for the cold snap goes. What weird articles are you reading online? I just read it today, as a matter of fact, and, and it was from the National Weather Service. They can't agree, like experts can't agree on whether it is or isn't climate change. And these are people that believe in climate change. Climate Climate change experts are saying, ah, some of them are going, I'm not sure this is related to climate change. I don't know what it is, but it may not be a climate change thing. Mm, all it's right. Not, they're, not, they're not people that are like the defeatists or you know, the folks that are on the side of climate change isn't happening at all. It's the climate change people that can't agree on this. I got at something more what interesting. What's that? Apparently, the lady who played the mom in Dinosaurs yeah. is also the mom in Archer and the lady from Rested Development. Really? Jessica Walter. Jessica Walter wow. was the mom? Yeah. Oh, she, she, you know what? She's a great voice actor. She really, really is. And of course, she was a great actor. She's on a very of iconic Elder. mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he says the guy who plays Elliot on Law and Order was the voice of one of the dinosaurs, according to one texter. Damn. Oh, that I, cool. that I didn't know. No, Sally Struthers was the voice. Was she? Yeah. Huh. Neat. Ah, uh, Sally, see? 
Good old, good old Sally. Good old, good old, I remember, old Sally. I, I don't know. Is it still on Netflix? At one point, Dinosaurs was on Netflix. It's got to be somewhere. I have no idea. Because I was watching it one afternoon, and my when my wife came home, and she's like, she walks, she's like, exactly what are you watching? What weird baby show are you watching? And you're like, like, no, it's actually a sophisticated comedy. Right. It's very <laughs> funny. And I try to have her watch it with me, and she's just like, you know, I'm much more willing to watch wrestling than this. Whoa. It, you she know, it's the, it, it is the Muppet thing, because uh, there was a, there's a science fiction show that a lot of us love called Farscape, where where puppets were used in that as well, and I think they might have been Henson's Muppets. I think so. It was, but they, yeah. but, but they I yeah, mean, Dinosaurs he, was Henson Muppets. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and in Farscape, again, they were amazing, but people just sometimes go, if it's Muppets, it's got to be a kid's show, and Farscape was, as well I, as Dinosaurs, I, not a kid's show, but really. Though, but even going back to the original Muppet show, it wasn't a kid's show necessarily. That's true. It had fuzzy Muppets, and that was the one thing that you could, you know, at least get the kids to watch and be cool with. Some of but those creations was, yeah. are amazing, you know, mm-hmm. and the, uh, Dark Crystal was uh, my Henson's Muppets too, yes, right? Yes, and that was dark. Yeah, but he made some great creations mm-hmm. that weren't, you know, just Kermit. Uh, congratulations, Steve. You won. Victorious. They- Victory. Call, is it number eight? Yes. You're looking for? All right, call number eight. Guess what you're doing? You're checking out Blue Oyster Cult at the Emerald Queen Casino. Mark. Caller number eight, 206 421 Rock. All right, this Updated is. Dinosaurs is on Hulu, according to somebody. I figured it had to be somewhere. I just knew if it's four seasons, someone's got to have it. Of course, Hulu's got it. Yep. See, Hulu's making you want to go It's making me want to go back. So they thought it was on Netflix the last time they saw it. I love that show. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it still is or not. There's a battle. I mean, right now, uh, you know, there's a battle between all the great shows, and everybody's got an app now. It is going to be difficult for you to really be able to watch everything you want to watch like you thought you could. I mean, when Netflix first came out, you're like, this is great. One place to watch all the stuff I want to watch. But now everybody's doing everything. Disney's going to get their own. My buddy just told me about, he just got DC Universe. If you wanted to watch some cool, you know, sort of DC comic space stuff, now you got to go there. It used to be like, you know, the network was where you get all the cool stuff. Like mm-hmm. you'd go, all right, if there's a cool show coming on, I will be able to watch it. Not anymore. You got to have the right service. So I'm upset with you. What would happen now? BJ, your stupid rowing in boats version of Cars is now deeply ingrained in my brain. It's a great song. What happened? Well, the guy said boats as far as the, like the song that Gary Newman sang about. And so I just said, here in my boat. Oh, my gosh. I'm in the water right now. I got paddles and, you know, in boats. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Wow. I think we should do a version. Here in my boat. He guessed boats. He did guess boats. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love that song, Gary Newman. I actually went. I went. Deep, I did deep cuts on that guy. I actually bought a bunch of his albums. I was so into Gary Newman, he was weird. Uh, so since my wife walked in on me watching World Police right at the puppet sex scene, she said, "What the hell are you watching?" <laughs> yeah, that's a weird scene to walk in on. Yeah, that that scene goes on for way too long. They made that uncomfortable. Yeah, they did, which was great. Yeah, so South Park of them. Oh, man. Well, there's a new survey out there asking people to name some of the strange snack food combos they've tried or that they like to eat regularly. And actually, I don't know what's going on with America because I'm looking at these combos and they're not strange. They're actually, I think a lot of us do it. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, they've got like the number one selling item on Alaska Airlines. Whenever people want to buy stuff from them, their fruit and cheese plate is like huge. It's like the big thing. Well, it's because it's like the cheapest thing on the damn menu. <laughs> Oh, they raised the price. It's not the cheapest thing anymore. Oh, really? Is it? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. still good. I'll still get it. I know. Yeah. I, that, that's why they raised the price, I'm sure, is because they're like, wait a second. Everybody's, no one's going for the Mediterranean tapas. People want this. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so number two on the list is apples and cheese, and that is like pretty much the staple of the Alaska Airlines fruit and cheese platter. Apples and cheese is delicious. Yeah, just in general. It's a nice balance of sweet and savory, and then you got crunchy, and depending on the cheese, soft. It's a good balance. Have you ever had rice cakes and cheese? Ooh, Yes. Well, you know, I mean, I never have because I feel like if I'm going to put cheese on a snack, it's not going to be on rice cakes. Rice cakes are delicious. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Those are right. the most boring yeah. snacks ever. Rice cakes Flavored are ha- rice cakes. Yeah, the cheddar ones are bomb. What is wrong with you people? That's for hell. That's the healthy thing you're supposed Technically, to have. Technically, I don't even know if they're that healthy because they got a bunch of carbs. They're supposed yeah. to be healthy, at least when they release them back in the day. I like I like all uh, other things. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. I remember. Somebody I just c- had a stroke. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, rice call, cakes. somebody call nine one one. I like rice cakes. I got you to like them. Because I was putting guacamole on them and uh, eating them as is, Vicky. and you had some. You're like, this is actually good. It's yes, but it's if you're going to put guacamole on something, you're going to put them on a tasty chip. If I have to choose, I mean, guacamole tastes good on anything, but I'd rather have it on a chip. Yeah, but we're doing the healthy thing, so we take what we can get. Guac is not the. I mean, guac is better fat, but it's still fat. Yeah. 
No carbs. Number one on the list, cheese and potato chips, which does not, I mean, it's not that crazy. Yeah. Is it just regular cheese or is it the cheese whiz? Or have you ever had potato chip nachos? That's what I that I have. Mm. I forget what restaurant does those. Is it the Icon Grill? I forget oh, where it was. Somebody does it. Yeah. It's so good. I can't remember either, but it's really good. Yeah, down anything at, with cheese is good. Yeah, yes. down at the Valley, they do Tim Cho's, oh, which are Tim's Cascade oh, nachos. Oh, and oh my God, they're so, so good. Yeah, the, 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 the I can when they do it with the Cascade, it's the only way to do them. Mm-hmm. I like tachos. Yeah. Tachos are really good. Tachos are amazing, too. Yeah. How about this one? Meat and sour cream. Have they never had a taco? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I put sour cream on everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah even on steak. I'll put it on whatever. Sour cream mind. on steak. Sour, sour cream's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I, you know, I wouldn't say it's a horrible idea. I put blue cheese on steak. Why not? Hmm. So, so far, the top three, we are not thinking these are weird snacks. But, okay. But, um, see, this has got to be, what, where is it, Middle America? Who are the people thinking these are weird that this shows up on a survey as weird snacks? There's a lot of people that have super bland palates. Sure. I do know some people, like, in, in my family, that will not eat anything that seems, quote, unquote, adventurous. They're just straight up burger, french fries, chicken tenders. Yeah. Anything else is weird. I them. got a buddy like that. We went down to Florida, and we took him out to dinner because I they were always good to us. And he said... I just like steak and whatever and I thought he was just trying to be nice didn't mm-hmm. want to go to a fancy place turns out yeah he was like I can't I don't want to even try any of this where's my, st- where's my steak and potatoes one person's rice cake pizzas are delicious huh. I agree I've had that I've never had that you know what's even more delicious what pizza pizza just regular guy pizza, pizza. Pizza. yep well, of course seriously Complaining that we're Number trying to be healthy. Just ha- just anger towards rice cakes. Well, it's just don't get. I, I'm sorry, but I, I, you know, if you're going to give me all the other stuff that you would put on unhealthy food, let me have the rest of the unhealthy food at that point. I mean, I mean you know, you try to dress up rice cakes. It'd be like the, a cauliflower pizza. I don't want a cauliflower pizza, but it makes me feel better than a regular pizza. Have you had the rice cake chips? Huh? The like the, the that that. Oh yeah, pop. yeah, I have, and they're they're not is. I mean, yeah, for if. if Again, if you're asking me to have something really delicious, I'm not going to go for those. I will oh, I go. F- I will go for something that I can have. They if, got if that it, sea salt flavor. I'll, so I'll what you're saying? Sea salt on it. What you're saying? If all of a sudden the doctor gave you one day to live, you're yeah. going to go for rice cake. You're going to go for rice cakes amongst everything else. Sure. Oh no, rice cakes is way down on the list. One day to live. My last meal is. I'm going to be nowhere near rice cakes. Fine. More really? For me. Your rice cake? You too, Vicky. Last day to live. You making it rice cakes? I mean, if it's like a rice cake pizza, sure. I'm you can have that's, anything. That's I'm not going to be my only meal. If I'm dying, I'm just going to eat until I die. Yeah, I'm going to eat everything. Are you really going to make rice cakes part of that? With no, all the great food you can have. Why not? Yeah. Right? You guys are full of bowl. I don't think rice cakes are getting anywhere near your last well, meals. You know, now I'll it will. I'll text you when it happens. Now it will. Good. Yeah. Danny, give them the drug. Give them the arsenic. Let's okay. see if they make it good. How about this one? Again, we have these restaurants all over the country. It's ice cream and french fries. I mean, who hasn't done that with a Frosty? It's not like this is unusual. Well, we don't have an ice cream french fry store. I mean, no, we have but places I mean, that sell ice cream and also I, sell french fries. Actually, there is a place in uh, Astoria. It's like a... Um, Freet and Scoop. Freet and Scoop. And oh, they sell... I stand corrected. Yeah. That's Belgian a Belgian-style fries. It's a friend with, of like, mine, homemade, I actually, yeah. uh, uh, runs it. Folks. Yeah. Yeah. So folks. good. But, I, but these are the these are the strange snack food combos. I think it's strange. I don't like dipping French fries in ice cream. Really, uh, I've never tried it. See, I don't dip them. I like to lick the ice cream and then take a bite of the French fry. Okay. So I get two separate experiences, but in one. Okay. I'll I'm kind of with you and, and our conversation yesterday, where it's like at that point I don't want to waste my fries right. with ice cream. Like I want to have them separately. And I'm a, I'm a man of tradition. You eat your food, and then you enjoy your dessert. Can we put that on your gravestone? <laughs> and next year will be a dessert and the, and the fries. That I need to be done with all of my food before I start my dessert. But to be yeah. fair, you're the kind of person that likes your all your food separate, right? I do. You yeah, have to have the, them separate. Yeah, the sectional toddler plate. Right. No. I, like, I don't like things mixing in with other things. So you take bites out of everything individually, right? Yeah, well, I'll kind of get that. This is way stupid Why? why, why do I care no, about this? It, it's but to answer your question, I will take a bite of everything on the plate, and I'll determine in my head which one tasted the best, and that's the one I go to the last. That's fair. So if it's like I, I had a plate of like French fries, some vegetables, and like some kind of whatever. Yeah. If the French fries are the tastiest thing, that's the last thing I'm eating on the plate. Well, because there's and people... And then dessert, BJ. I know people Why? like Steve, because yeah. when I mix, I mix everything. It's like meatloaf, vegetables, and mashed potatoes. I mix it into one big mound. Okay. And people look at me like I'm a heretic or something. Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm curious. How about chocolate and popcorn? Someone texted it. Yeah. Oh, chocolate and popcorn's awesome. I mean, I mean they actually make it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they make drizzled popcorn for that reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's good. Um, Dude, shout out to uh, Ted Smith's family. Smith okay. family popcorn. What? 
They have their own popcorn. Ted's got his own popcorn? Well, his family does on the East Coast. And I think you can get it online. And I finally tried it. And they have a cookies and cream popcorn. Oh, fascinating. Wow. It was like crack in my mouth, man. It was the, Okay, that's probably not a good way to talk. It was like heaven in my mouth. It was the most amazing tasting thing I've had. Yeah. I looked at Ted. I'm like, your family's on to something. This yeah. gourmet popcorn thing is nuts. Oh, yeah, dude. Yep, Smith Family Popcorn. Good Cape Cod. Dude, they have a and Cape Cod. Toast yeah. one. Oh. Good family. I think it's... Good popcorn, great family, or something like that. I don't know what they're still getting. Birthday oh. cake? Oh. Yeah. The Chesapeake is also really good, but the cookies and cream is next level. All right. Get it. Where'd you get? Where? Where? where why, why? You got some? I didn't get any. Well, I, was at Ted's, I was at Ted's place, and he had a tub of it, and we were wasted, and I was like, I'm eating it. He's like, I'm <laughs> saving it for my Christmas party. I'm like, they won't miss a couple of them. Yeah. Dang, that's, yeah, it's too late for that. I what about this. Cheetos on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Oh. Mm, uh, well... Uh, do you guys have chips with like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I mean, you have them on the side, any kind of Fritos, Cheetos, or whatever. I mean, my mom, that's how you always got it as a kid. You got a, you, you got your sandwich at school, and then if you're lucky, you got a bag. Because this, this back then, it was a treat if mom would go out and buy the snack bags of mm-hmm. any of the, like, the chips. So I can understand if you got it on the side. No, you guys don't even do them on the side? No. Wow. Another person has tried dipping pretzel sticks in a chocolate frosty. It's awesome. Oh, we yeah. see as kids, we like, get the pretzels, crumble them up in our ice cream, and mix it all up into the ice cream. Well, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. with Cold Stone and all those blizzards and everything, I mean, you put everything in there. I can understand How about that. ketchup on mac and cheese? Someone no. just texted it. Well, somebody does it on potato chips as well as on pizza on this list. I would... I, I've never I've never tried it, but I wouldn't be opposed because I finally had a grilled cheese sandwich with ketchup on it, and it was fantastic. Mm. Yeah, grilled cheese and, and and a small amount of ketchup. Uh, again, if I have tomato soup though, then that I don't need the ketchup because the tomato soup gives me that same and even better. I just feel like it's too sweet. I don't know. I, maybe I just need what hot do you sauce. Mean about pizza when you've already got the pizza. Well, right. if you get extra marinara sauce, maybe I think I it's better with marinara than ketchup. Well, marinara is yeah, it's a completely different taste than ketchup. Ketchup is just basically sugar. Yeah. It's Tomatoes. And I just feel like I don't know if it's the right delivery on pizza. So it's hey, it's Candace, your fellow melter. Shout out to Summer Meltdown. I really like chocolate rice cakes with peanut butter and chocolate chips. Ooh. Again, last meal, you're, you're going to reach for that. <laughs> Why are you so, like, doom and gloom, man? We're not dying tonight. I, I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, uh, come on. Yeah, let's all man. be honest that these rice... We're telling ourselves we love rice cakes because that's all we're supposed to be eating to be healthy, I guess. That's what I... They try or to maybe sell me that we find them. them to be tasty. You oh, know, everyone's God. got different tastes, BJ. It's like styrofoam covered with whatever you want to put on it. Hey, would you like any cheese on styrofoam? Sure. Yay! It's tasty. Look at this styrofoam. It's great. It's got cheese on it. As long as we can all agree that pineapple on pizza does not belong. That's no. all I'm going to say. Bye. <laughs> I'm with you, Steve. Danny's a heretic. So that's all there is to it. One of many. All right, it's time for listeners on the loose because we're done. As you can tell. You pick the topic, you guide the show, 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Whatever you want to talk about, we got your calls, we got your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by Beacon Plum and Heating and Mechanical. Hey, Steve! Yeah? Stop freaking! Call Beacon. Stop freaking. Call Beacon. That's right, man. Listeners on the Loose. This is where you get your chance to pretty much run this show. What do you want to talk about? It could be something new. It could be something we discussed yesterday, last week, last year. Hey, 20 years ago when I first got here, you could say, hey, remember that one day when you talked? That what one time. That one time in band camp. Anything you want to talk about. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. But remember, there is a rule. Steve does have a rule. It's a simple one, BJ. Just to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, you get gonged, and then we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. That's right. There was some gonging that happened today already. I mean, you're, uh, you got an well, easy gong finger. Yeah, we didn't even gong a caller. We gonged the dong. Yeah. Talk. Gong the dong. And also right. gong Danny when he yeah. talked about uh, no pineapple on pizza. For oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, Two gongs today. Was, yeah, that was very gong worthy. All right, let's go to uh, Adam and Bothell. Adam, you are on the rock. BJ, uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good considering, you know, I, I love Thursdays. It's the Friday Junior. I get stoked. Uh, how about yourself, how Steve? How are you doing, man? Excellent. All hey, right. What about I'm you, Adam? really, really good. Oh, cool. I'm doing really, really good. I, I apologize for how loud it sounds. I'm on my uh, iPhone with my Bluetooth speaker in, in my dump truck driving today. Oh, nice. But the reason I, yeah, I called, thanks, guys. I called for listeners on the loose because, BJ, I really wanted to have a heart-to-heart with you. 
uh, I've been listening to your show. I'm from Bellingham normally, but now I said I can get you guys. I listen to you guys every morning. And BJ, I just love you. You know, you seem to have a real big heart. Oh. Always, uh, you know, you, you really do deep down. And I know that sometimes you talk about watching a movie and you'll, you'll start crying and stuff. And, yeah, that's why I don't go to movies with Vicky. Driver, got, <laughs> got the big beard and stuff. And you wouldn't guess it, but I cry at everything, even radio commercials and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I think that's really cool. It's and, my Snow uh, Palmy Casino uh, commercials that's making you cry, isn't it? Those yeah. crab legs. <laughs> crab legs! <laughs> crab legs! <laughs> yeah. No, uh, you're, they say as you get older, too, man, as a dude, I don't know if we get more estrogen or less testosterone. I but, jokingly call it manopause because yeah. I, I definitely feel like I, I have struggles sometimes. I'm watching that damn rock show, Titans, and then a moment of human triumph, and I'm, like, getting watery. Yeah. When was the last time you guys cried? Uh, Titans. Oh, was that yesterday or a couple weeks ago? Okay, when yeah. one of the guys hugged his little kid. I, Aww. yeah, I, I, oh, I, you started I was watching. Shut up, Vicky. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember what, but I was watching a show with my wife, and she's like, "Are you crying? Like, Shut up!" I don't know what it was, but we're. It was like, yeah, some show I was watching. Like, damn it! You know what it is? I'm finally wearing off on you guys. I finally appreciate. You finally yeah, appreciate a, me. It's a fact. I see how it is. Lots of crying. Well, we're yeah, not I'm, gonna start painting eye black on our eyes. Or not no, yet, anyway, no, no, that's no. fine. That comes with time. Uh, that's never well, going to happen. I appreciate the kind words, Adam. Only, Thanks, man. Two men. Yeah, but, BJ, but oh. BJ, one more thing real quick. The, re- the other reason I called is there's also this other side of you that I hear all the time and it's just like humanity of doom. It's, it's full doom and gloom and guys are calling calling you over to talk to their wives and stuff and, <laughs> and you've got this really strange other side of you. You're like Harvey Dent to me sometimes and I'm just like, well, what is your real attitude? Well, like, dude, you know, the, 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 big human, heart, yeah. awful man. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, buddy. That's... <laughs> I really can't say it better than that, can I? <laughs> you know, I, I, I will say this. We human beings have to understand that you're not just black and white, which is the problem we have when somebody does something wrong. You know, you can never believe that maybe some of the most heinous characters in history, somebody loved them and they were kind to some people. You just would never believe that. So, you know, I, I won't mention any names because people get mad when you do. But think of the worst characters in history that you think, oh, that person, no way should we ever feel anything good about them. But actually, they did do good things for certain people. You know, they did. You know, they had a mother, father, whatever. And, you know. And th- that's what humans are. We're complex beings. We're not just good or bad. We we're a little bit of everything. Like, so. like the great philosopher Fred Durst. I remember he was in an interview one time, and he talked about how you can't really trust that person that's just consistently one way. Yeah, they got to have those highs and lows. It's just human nature. Yeah, but you know what, Fred Durst. Fred Durst, man. You know he knows his stuff. He's a great pundit. Yep. It's so listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. And then he also once said something about sniffing Britney Spears' panties. So, I mean, you know, you take the good with the bad. He sometimes has good things to say, sometimes bad. I do have to say that Fred Durst might have the best Instagram account outside of Lulu the Warrior Princess. Oh, not again with that. Fred Durst's Instagram is just pictures of, of old station wagons. <laughs> That's he, all he's doing? He apparently is a big fan of obsessive fan of station wagons so it's not every picture on his instagram page but a lot of pictures are just and i'm i'm that was my first car it was an 81 chevy malibu <laughs> so you like, had a station wagon i had a station a powder blue station oh, wagon oh man those oh, were, i was a blue station wagon or two man yeah so i always have like a soft spot for a station wagon i, I still wish i still had my first car it's like one of those things yeah so i'm always looking at his instagram page and he's obsessed with station wagons, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a you know it's a thing gone by because nobody makes them anymore, right? I mean, the crossovers are, and the SUVs are basically the new station wagons. We need station wagons to come back. Man, look at all that wood paneling, right? Man, that's so classic. <laughs> oh, that's so, so cool. So classic. They were yeah. the best, man. Yeah. Well, good for Fred Durst, man. <laughs> you know that he's got a he's got a hobby. I wonder if he just if he gets those pictures himself or he just he just goes on the internet and goes crazy. I and think some of the pictures are from the internet because yeah. there's some old ads on there too. But I never grew up with the the paneled station wagon. My mom did have a station wagon, and my favorite thing was the very back seat. You could sit down in reverse. Oh so yeah! So you drive and you were facing like people that were behind you. Yeah, mine was a '81 Chevy Malibu Classic. This is kind of similar to what mine looked like. It was a very light blue. Yeah, and the thing was a tank. Look at that thing! That thing's a beating. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Dan, you just pull it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I would drive this today if I if I would had. you really a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe someone will start making them again if there's enough people like you that reminisce and hey, for finally getting the Ford Bronco. We might as well get some station wagons. Oh, finally, we can drive a Ford Bronco without thinking about OJ. Oh, I just made you think about OJ. Sorry. <laughs>
Man, I miss this car. <laughs> you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. Your calls, your texts at 933 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show at 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. All right, we got a new study, which we're not going to go into right now because we have to talk to people. Okay. Let's uh, do that instead. Uh, so I want to know if any of us have seen the Fire Festival on Netflix. Yes. You have? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Rev, you have too. Uh-huh. What is this? I, I keep meaning to because I remember the. the the debacle that was this festival, and, I, and it sounds like it'd be a really good documentary. It's the most interesting thing I've watched. Is on this Netflix. the guy that stole all the money from people? Yeah. Oh. Well, kind of. He, he was going to put on a, a, a big festival with Blink 182 headlining a bunch of other people. In like and, some wa- random place, right? Yeah, in the Bahamas. Yeah. And it, with Ja Rule. And ja Rule. It, it's all about that. And then it just went to S, and it, it, you know he got sent to jail for six years. What so, was this, a poorly planned festival? Basically, he didn't know what they were doing, and uh, they didn't know how to plan a festival. They, the Bahamas don't have the structure for such a huge music festival. Then they, they sold it as this like high price ten thousand dollar yeah. ticket thing with cabanas, and when they got there, it was just this like white tent was like their luxury cabana, and they got like a cheese sandwich. They were yeah, they were literally FEMA tents oh, that yeah. they found. Like, and they're just all of these uh, Instagram influencers who were being brought into yeah, this because like they the were Jenners. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because they were promoting this thing. They hit a huge, gigantic like social media campaign. So the Jenners went to this. They hyped it. They, oh. they didn't go. Oh. And there was, and they got a bunch of. I mean, I'm saying lower tier influencers. It's people that I didn't know, but these are still people that have like millions of followers and have a huge social media imprint. Yeah, Bella had it, and Emily Rad. Well, however you say her last name. Yeah, and so yeah, they got all these models to come down and do all these like promo videos and make it look amazing. And then it just turned out to be just completely horrible because the guy was booking people or saying that he was booking people that had no intention or had never even been given any money to go to this. Boy, there's a, they say, you know, it's it, no matter how things change, things do stay the same. Because the idea of social media influencers is a relatively new concept. It's a wild west out there because mm-hmm. you don't really know are you getting your money's worth? Are they yeah. legitimate, some of these people? Is or are they getting paid a buttload of cash yeah. to endorse this product, which most of them are, that's what's yeah. happening. And do they have the followers they say they have? Or are they bots? Did they buy them? I mean, you know, it's it's just, a, you just don't know how much of any of this is a scam because it's so hard to measure. And then how about maybe some of these scammers got scammed by a guy? I mean, you just got a lot of sketchiness involved yeah. with all of it. Well, the interesting thing is, too, is the guy was actually like a legit business guy in New York like he actually was doing pretty good but then when he brought this whole thing he just had was way in over his head and then after that he just turned out to be this big scumbag that's yeah, yeah that, that, that that's what I thought is that you don't go to jail unless they go no you did bad stuff there's two documentaries out there there's uh, the fire fraud which is on Hulu right. and then there's fire which is on Netflix there's two different documentaries about this yeah. yes wow that's how and good this guy is you need to watch both of them the oh, first God. one on Hulu shows how much of an insane sociopath he really is. Okay. Like, he did some really terrible things even before this to get into that. It's like Wolf of Wall Street kind of bad? Yeah. yeah. This is a guy who has watched, like, uh, like Wall Street, Wolf of Wall Street, like, oh, all of these, boy. like, American greed type things. Yeah. And then just encompasses that. And then the Netflix series kind of mostly goes not with him because he's actually on the Hulu one, but the Netflix one shows all of the people who he affected okay. and who bought bought into it because he is just one of those guys who can sell you anything. I just wonder if anybody and you guys would know from the, the, the documentaries was there a possibility to vet this situation that you might go ah, this just doesn't look like I need to do this. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. There's so many people saying you can't do this because he's like oh we want to set up this entire concert and do all these things and most of the times a lot of the people are saying oh this will take 18 months and they're like well we're going to do it in six weeks I, and people I, are like we can't do this and then he's like no we can do this and he actually believed he could do it up until the point when they couldn't when it was the day of and the people invest, the people that decided to take him up on his offer and go this is going to be the greatest experience I've ever had I bet, I bet if they did a little bit of homework they probably would have seen like no this isn't very legit yeah 
like and it but it was that blinded by a his charm b the yeah. chance to do something absolutely amazing they had act, they had stated that it was going to be happening on Pablo Escobar's old oh island oh my god yeah you know see and it was just it was it was like instagram come to life like where everything looks awesome and is so great but you realize it's not really i'm just happy cuz typically i do purchase anything that the genders endorse oh, so sure, I, yeah. I, this was the first time where i didn't do something that they were influencing Ooh, you me got to lucky. do you got lucky. i really dodged a bullet yeah. I, I would like to say this right now. I've had this conversation with my wife. The greatest party that never happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it comes to spending a great deal of money or investing your money, because you'll always have someone come up to you with get get, get rich quick schemes in my entire life. You've got the network marketers. You've got the pyramid people. You know these people. Hey, I made $300 by just you know, filling out surveys. You've got your friends that are into that. The people who are really legit in the world of financial investing or any kind of thing, they are the most boring people in the world. Anybody that's got super charm, I really am leery of when they're talking about any kind of financial investment. Uh, I, I feel like my wife hates our guy that plans out our estate plans and all that stuff. She hates him because he's so boring. She's like, I w- he kills me. He's so boring. I go, that means he's legit because the guys that really know their stuff aren't charming. They're numbers people. They're not charmers. They're, they really just are you know here are the numbers if you're looking for charmers chances are you're gonna get effed just it's yeah. just in, in life remember that well yeah i mean it's, sometimes they're just trying to do whatever it takes to get you to do what they want them you yeah know, especially with this kind of a festival it's something yeah just the, the amount of money that was being dropped on this is insane but if you were a smart person you could have realized well, this is too good to be I'm true not. i'm not well no i mean outside, outside, outside of you okay. luckily for you your wife is in charge of the cash so you would never be allowed to pull this kind of trigger damn Right. So it says, Rev, tell them about the take one for the team story. Oh, oh man. man. Okay, so, geez. Okay, so this guy is such a charmer. He gets one of his old mentors. Uh, essentially, they had water, but it was, uh, the customs had gotten it because they had to pay the custom fees. Wow. And, uh, well, they didn't have the money for that. So he convinced his... Uh, his mentor to go down there and to convince the customs officers to get that water in the possibly worst way that a man could get oh. them. Yeah, he, he was like, he's like, hey, you're you're the only gay one that works with us. Go down there and talk into the microphone. Wow. And the guy was about he to do it. He was fully prepared to do so. Wow. And he's like, take one for the team. And we then, really yeah. need this to happen. Wow. And then the, the, need this water. the customs guys were like, gosh, I typically do that for coffee, not water. True. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. And it says up above, it talks about this. Festival documentary star reacts to this confession going viral. Quote, I'm blown away. <laughs> <laughs> you Un- have, I get it. Firmly intended. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, firmly. That was that was really bad. That whole thing, and then there's like another waha moment. He went to jail for this, gets bonded out, and then he starts scamming people out of more money yeah. while he's out of jail. Yeah, right. he doesn't reform. Yeah, not at yeah. all. Yeah, see, there's th- I, 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 you know, and. <sighs> See, my wife is the kind of person that gets targeted by these people all the time. And this is the big reason why we have fights, because I tell her, you can't be in charge of anything monetary. She gets so mad. Mm -hmm. I go, I'm sorry. You are an idiot. You believe all this stuff rather than going talking to somebody who's boring that actually will tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's and people are. You're just stupid if you believe in these charmers. You really are. And someone needs to tell you that because look at all the money you're going to lose. I just want to see Blink-182, man. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, right. Can't do it. All right, um, we have a more important question. So you're saying watch both of these? Yes. I got no time for these kind of people. I mean, I, I look at it like... I feel like I got what I needed to get out of this movie yeah. from, from, I, I, from I agree. Reverend Danny. I'm good. I would just get irritated. Appreciate you guys. I would get so irritated watching <laughs> You would watching lose them. your mind. I would. I would actually want to sit next to you while watching this. I'd be like, I can't believe they, they were able to get this much money in the first place. It'd be that stupid the way they blow it. I'd be so mad. All right, uh, here's a question for you. What do Ryan Castle and a bank robber have in common? I'm going to tell you at 9.50 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and a bank robber have in common? It should be illegal to get paid for what I do. Yeah. I would assume that every person that goes into a bank that doesn't work there is a robber, because why on earth would you go to the bank in 2019? True. 
That's yeah. an interesting point. Like if somebody, if I was a bank teller, first of all, congratulations on still having work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And secondly, if I was a, if I was a bank teller and somebody walked in and got in line at the bank, I'd be like, "Oh no, yeah, is this the one?" Right? Because why else are they here? I always kind of get a little weird with the times I've gone to the bank. I have like a knit cap on, and I'm like adjusting it as I'm going in. I'm like, "Crap!" I'm probably thinking, like, it looks like I'm about to put down like the ski mask. Oh yeah. Also the sweating and the looking at the cameras. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. The, the feverishly writing a note. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The, the pretend gun with my fingers in my pocket. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is, I mean, a woman walked into a bank in Massachusetts. She's had a black beanie, dark sunglasses, black fleece. Walked up to a teller and wrote a note on a piece of paper. But then instead of handing it to the teller, she ripped up the note, threw it in the garbage can, and walked out. Well, they fished out the paper because they were like, what do you think she was about to do? And it did say, give me the money when they put the papers back together. I thought it was going to, will you be my valentine? (laughs) Wow, you know, they could still charge her with attempted robbery even though she didn't do it. Send nudes. That would have been a good one, too. Send nudes. Okay. (laughs) Riot Gas. What? He's got 12 pack of nudes apparently for you, or he wants you to send them to him. He's a BJ and Miggs play of the day. Finding purpose is really, really an important thing in life. I know I've been to a lot of seminars, and that was the thing you sat down and you paid the money for, and that was what they said. What's your purpose in life? And it's like, I don't I don't know. And you know, they go, well, fart jokes. That, yeah, that's about Should it. Fart jokes be a purpose. <laughs> Steve, if that's the case, you are the big purpose nice. winner. I'm trying to incorporate the word dong into a conversation at least once a show. You have found. On your mission in life, Steve, there's no law. You know what? You will always be sublime. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. Can I leave things off of a bankruptcy, like my car? You have to list all of your assets and creditors when you file bankruptcy. So if I, you would have to tell the, the court and the trustee that you have the car or that you have a car loan. Uh, you could say that I want to keep my car and continue to make my payments on the car. Uh, but the, the court will need to know that you have a car and, and that may, you may have a payment on the car. So by by leaving it off the bankruptcy, if you mean that you cannot disclose it to the court, the answer to that is no, you must disclose it. However, that does not mean that you'll lose those assets. You'll be able to keep things like a car and a house in almost all cases, but you must disclose them to the court. Um, but you'll need to continue to make payments on a house or a car that you intend to keep. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.